and we're live. What's going on guys? We're back for another show, or actually, it's really the first show. And first of many. <laughs> first Hopefully. of many. Yeah, exactly. See how this one goes. <laughs> I think you may have just heard the intro. Psst. We haven't actually done an intro yet. Um, um, Pre-recorded <laughs> intro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, we're going to do the intro based off what we talk about today, but otherwise the premise of this show is we want to, want to talk about we go for these walks after after work or uh, at the end of the day, and we, we talk a lot of I don't know, technology, business, life in general, and we thought, why not record them and, and post them on the internet so other people can enjoy them too, and, and really just so we can look back on them in 20 years and go, what were we thinking? <laughs> well, maybe here's a brief intro. I'm a business person learning AI, and you're an AI person learning business, so kind of mash in that situation and it's just good to throw around ideas. I have ideas about business and how business can integrate AI and your the tech side of things so you share the spotlight on that side. Still a newbie, still a newbie <laughs> on that part but I love learning so. Well you've got the AI shirt on man, I didn't get, I should have got me one of them, look at that. I don't know if you can see it but what's, what's that from? Um, MIT, it's uh, Artificial General Intelligence. Which is an epic series on YouTube. Mm. And by the way, everything we talk about will wrap it up. It's, it's it'll be in the, the show notes somewhere in the in the internet, yeah. either on my I was about to say if we reference something we're gonna chuck it in the description so that people can yeah. Yeah, well that's that's, cool. that's enough of an intro or a second intro or whatever. But the show is gonna be we're not entirely sure what it's called, maybe Burke Brothers Podcast, something. If you've got any ideas, send them our way. Or otherwise three ish things, because that's what we want to try and keep it to. Just three ish three points every yeah. week. Three points every week or something. All right, so let's let's kick it off. Amazon's Amazon shareholder letter. <laughs> yeah, that's we're completing each other's sentences already. Yeah. All right, so what did you did you read the whole thing? Yeah, I read most of it. Uh, well, all of it. Sorry. Um, there's a few things that really stuck out for me, and I'd like to start off by. Wait, wait, wait. What is Amazon shareholder letter? So two weeks ago, Jeff Bezos posted the Amazon shareholder letter for 2017, yep. reflecting on their results of how they went and updates on how the company's going as a whole, pretty much issued to the whole company, all their employees and the wider community, so shareholders, to pretty much provide a general update on how the company's operating. Yeah, here's what we've been doing, here's what we want to do for the future. Yeah. So the the one thing that stuck stuck straight out at me was Amazon Prime. Like, Prime. Wow. Yeah. Like, 100 million people per year are now using Prime. And 100 like, million. Yeah. Across, that's, well that's globally, but yeah. I initially when it's, I read it, I'm like, no way, if that's the US, it's then not, just, It's not here yeah. in Australia yet, I don't think. No, it's not. Yeah. Because, well, obviously Amazon's recently new, they just came to the Australia, so they obviously got a lot of distributions and like, I can't wait. logistics to <laughs> sort out here, and obviously like, Obviously, different legislation and pay wages, so they've got to sort out a whole lot of logistics to get their prices down to what they're known for over in the States and obviously other places like Europe, I would imagine, to being like the low-cost delivery provider. Yeah. And the owner of the last mile delivery, as what they refer to. Last mile delivery. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So the last mile delivery is like basically the last... So being able to get you a package very quickly... Yeah, like owning that last mile from point A to point B in the delivery, like having the okay. most efficient so way being, to being on that yeah. last step of the pipeline, mm. which is so important because I think I read in the in the shareholder letter as well that um, in 2017, third parties sold more on Amazon's site than Amazon themselves. Mm. So like Amazon Marketplace, which I'm not entirely across, but that's kind of insane to me that they just opened it up. It's just this one massive marketplace for buyers, sellers, of all people, not even, and Amazon are just like the, the hub, mm -hmm. the hub, they even do the fulfillment, everything. Allow people to use their, obviously their distribution centers and their logistics to sell their products and they just take a share of the profit, obviously, yeah, a percentage to cover what they spend and then also what the profit, obviously, to cover their expenses and then also a little bit extra for them on the side. Yeah, pretty much just to own, just a way to own more of the market. The Amazon takeover is real. What was, actually, one of my favourites was um, day one, how Bezos says that like Amazon's 
philosophy is that it's always day one, which mm. I totally agree with, which is, which is pretty much how, how we try to live almost at the moment is, is everything is a learning opportunity and he attaches at the bottom of, because I read, I made the mistake, I read the 2016 shareholder letter again. I'd already read it, I read it last year, but it was, I think it's good. I think, I took notes on both of them actually. Um, what were the main So last year, last year wasn't as long, so this one was a bit more, um, this one was a bit more full of numbers, I thought. Like, here's what we did. Last year was kind of like, here's four points that we think uh, Amazon kind of giving a, uh, or Jeff Bezos and Amazon's insight into to what makes a good business. And of course, number one was, was true customer obsession. Um, this is from last year's letter, so I'll just go breeze through these points quickly. Number one was true customer obsession. Are you delighting your customers? Uh, number two was resist proxies. Um, so that means when big companies get big, they can kind of get into a space where they just think, they're fulfilling the process and they think that the same process they've been doing for so long should keep getting results. Mm. Um, but Bezos in the letter said, uh, do, do we own the process or does the process own us? Which I think is a very good point to think about, especially not even on a big company scale, but on any, any level. Like, does the process, are you just going through the actions? Uh, does the process rule over you? Or are you innovating on that? So resist proxies, I'm not entirely sure what, what in terms of proxy uh, that meant, but it'll be more in the shareholder letter. Um, embrace external trends, which I thought was, was massive as well. Um, and one of them was uh, rather than fight against techno te technological trends, make sure you're using them to your advantage because that's what he said. He's like, if you're, if you're going against technology and whatnot, you're essentially betting against yourself. Mm. And so the, the two main ones were, of course, artificial intelligence and machine learning, ride the tailwinds of society. Um, and the fact that they keep struggling with, with that in mind, they're struggling to keep uh, Echo in stock. So that's, that's pretty insane. Um, Exciting times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the last one is high velocity decision making. Um, so he said, if you're 90% sure on what, what decision you're about to make, you're um, probably waiting too long. He's like, we, we like to keep m m moving fast and have this, uh, this saying in-house called disagree and commit. Um, so he gave the example of, of a couple of producers pitching him a, a pilot for Amazon Prime and he said he didn't really agree with what it was and he's like, well, uh, it's going to take way too long for you to convince me, so I'm going to disagree and commit and know that you're, you're capable of good work. So I just think that's, imagine having a leader like that. Mm. But that's, that's, that's a 2016 letter, yeah. which is a lot of value. Um, but, but my favourite for 2017, what you got? Just, just before we move on, back to the 2017. Maybe you could share your experience with them being so customer focused with your AWS issue. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so customer focused. Um, I the last year or so I've been learning uh, AI technologies and whatnot. Using a lot of them, uh, a lot of these technologies require uh, intense compute power. Uh, so what that means is essentially. You, I use my laptop to, to build the basis of a, of a program, let's say, and then because my laptop doesn't have enough uh, computing power or horsepower, you need to, to dial into the cloud to recruit a bigger computer uh, somewhere in, in the world, somewhere, somewhere else, right? So a lot bigger than what I could store in my room. Or actually, you could probably store in your room, it's just that you don't have access to it all the time. And obviously and it costs a lot of money to have the yeah, hardware. Yeah, it costs a lot of money to set up this type of hardware, right? Um, so I, w I dial into Amazon's cloud server, which is AWS, and I, I start up a computer that's somewhere in Sydney or the US, usually in Sydney because that's the closest to where we live. Um, and I, I for, for, for some reason I forgot to shut it down. And this is a problem actually. I think... I think um, it would be good to get notified if yeah. it's running and not being used. Like, surely that's that's something they could look into doing. And so essentially, I had this computer running, and it's quite expensive to keep running over a long period of time because it's just number of hours, right? They charge per second. 
Um, so it's efficient if you're using it for just what you need it for, but not so efficient if, if you're just letting it run with nothing running, which is what I was doing. I, 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 did, I used it for an assignment and then stopped it uh, about, I would say, two to three weeks later once I received the bill. Um, which was 700 US dollars. So that's almost a thousand Australian dollars. And I kind of, I was like far out. I was, I, I was a student, I'm still a student, it was a lot of money. And I'm like, I, I, if I pay for this, that's, I, I don't have much money at the moment. Um, so I reached out to the AWS support, told them my story, said, hey, I'm a student, I was running this for an assignment the assignment finished and for some reason I thought I terminated it. Well, terminate means just pretty much pull the power plug on it, but I didn't, so completely my fault. But they turned around and said, hey, you know what? We can see what you've been doing. Thank you for reaching out to us. Thank you for using AWS. We're wiping the whole bill. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's no small bill like either. That's 700 US dollars. So I don't know what their margins are, like what it actually costs them, but mm. That, that, that's something that, that, that comes back to what he said, he's like, tr obsess over your customers. And I mean, they may take a hit on that, but I'll be a customer for Amazon for life. Like I bought the, the Echo the other day and I use AWS almost every second day. Yes, yeah, massive. But 2017 letter, we kind of went on a ramble there in the 2016 letter. So let's, um, go, let's go back to my first point on Prime. Prime. So 100 million people, if we look at the metrics, that's... 9.9 .9 billion in annual recurring revenue just What's in prime? 99 US a year. 99, yeah, 99 US, yeah, I should have said that first. 99 US uh, a year. 100 and, million customers. And 100 million customers, so there's 9.9 .9 billion in, in annual recurring revenue just from that section of their business. Just that one revenue stream. That's just insane. And that, that the prime members, I was listening, two and three households mm. in the US have prime. I think I may have read some statistic that more people have Prime than own a gun in the US. <laughs> but but that, that, I think I, I don't know how accurate that is. But I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. That's it's, like that's it's 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 incredible. I can't believe like the scale of this company. And we were saying, um, actually, let's talk about something something technology based. So um, I read in the we'll get back to that in a second. Um, Twenty seventeen annual letter was. Uh, a big big thing was Amazon SageMaker or AWS, mm. which is a totally another business almost on its own. That's that's twenty billion yeah. revenue. Insane. Um, twenty billion. So Amazon AWS SageMaker, which was released about six months ago, um, but I'm only just learning about it now. I should be more across these sort of things, um, which is essentially like uh, how do I explain this? So it's automating the machine learning pipeline, right? So if you're a if you're someone like me, who's running like data science models or whatnot, I can go to AWS, get into an environment, so like a, a web application per se, uh, load in my data. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Bless yeah. you, brother. Um, load in my data into Amazon's databases, yeah. and then their their machine learning algorithms that they've put in are made to, to run extremely efficiently. I think that was talking about 10x, 10x, up to 10x faster on this dedicated SageMaker service. And it's, it's, I can essentially train my model in one click, train the model on the data, and then it even has an option to scale up to what you want it to do, so how much power you can dedicate. So you can just turn this little knob and say, I want, it, I want this to run for X and I want it to uh, use this much computing power so that means it might cost this much at minimum or it might cost this much at maximum. So that's up front because a lot of the machine learning at the moment is kind of guesswork. Like you, are, you run your model, you adjust your parameters in terms of your settings, like, like knobs on a, on, a, on a microwave or on an oven and you see how it goes. It's guess and check work. But this thing, you upload it, it does, it works, the test a bunch of different models for you and it does a bunch of hyperparameter tuning as well, depending on how long you want to let it run. And it's all, all packaged in little modules. So if you want to do the whole pipeline of up training your data, deploying it to applications, and then whatever, oh sorry, storing the data online, so storage, training, deployment, you can do it. 
But if you want to do the storage somewhere else, training on there, deploying somewhere else, you can break it up like that. And that one service had 250,000 customers in, in, since launch. And it was announced no, end of last year, November 29th. And I'm like, that, that is insane. It's making it more accessible. That's what I think is the end game for a lot of these, these cloud-based uh, offerings like Google Cloud or mm -hmm. AWS or Azure is, okay, they're, they're pretty accessible now if you have the know-how. But for someone like yourself who, um, and me who are just getting new into the field and we haven't been developers for five to 10 years, I think like SageMaker is, is definitely very valuable, especially mm -hmm. if you're a startup. Like you don't have the resources like a big business has. You could, you could get on there, store your data in one place, train your model in one place, and deploy it all in one place. It's, it's fascinating. But that's enough, that's enough from, uh, um, from, from me in terms of the, the ML side of things. Oh, actually, what else, what else did, you, uh, did you find in the letter? What was your... With, with AWS? Yeah, particular? let's go. Overall? What do you reckon? AWS, was there anything else from the letter that stood out to you? How, how they're really like accelerating their pace of innovation in the areas of AI and machine learning, obviously as you just touched on it, but it seems mm. like AI and machine learning within, the, in, within AWS is a very big focus point for them because they obviously see the potential and the size of that market yeah. and a lot of people are now starting to integrate machine learning into their organizations. So what's there to run it off? AWS. Yeah, so AWS there. If you look at a graph, haven't got one for, for, for the screen at the moment, but, or for the, for the listener, sorry. AWS, just imagine in the top right, and then all the other offices, imagine them in the, the bottom left. Like that's, that's how far ahead they are in terms of numbers, services, etc. But that being said, I went to a Google event a couple weeks ago, and they're ramping up. They're trying to, they're, trying, they're like, yeah, they, hey, I want some of this AWS pie. <laughs> and yeah, well, obviously it's twenty. They're making twenty billion. Well, twenty billion in revenue of AWS alone. So, yeah. and it's just crazy to think that when you look at Amazon, they're a retail technology company essentially. Yeah. But in the background, they silently became the biggest cloud server provider in the world. Yeah. So it's just crazy. What were you saying the other day about them being split up? So. If the, if the blunt, if regulation were to hit Amazon, I would, I would just imagine that it would be easier for them just to spin off the AWS side of the business to, mm -hmm. instead of like categorize, like just take AWS out of the picture and have that as its own, own entity and then yeah. leave the rest of the business as a whole. Because obviously if it's doing 20 billion in revenue, like it's worth nearly 200 million, 200 billion dollars, that section of the business line. What do you mean? Like, so if it's... What you just did a math equation there, so twenty billion means that you're worth two hundred billion. Yeah, it's it's kind of like I was just kind of throwing out like a ballpark figure of what. Actually, I think I've heard that before. Like, if you're doing a hundred million RR recurring and you're recurring revenue, yeah, yeah. ARR, you you got a billion, worth dollar, a billion dollars, a billion yeah. dollar valuation. That was like with Slack and all those other mm -hmm. things. Okay, that's okay. I get that now. So you just kind of ten exit for a ballpark figure. Um. Another massive thing I liked was uh, Whole Foods, which I think is massive. Mm, um, the acquisition of Whole Foods, Amazon's. Oh, that's a space I really want to get into, I think. If I was to go over there, um, like food is something I love. I, I'm passionate. Food's like my religion. You know how into it I am. And the fact that I think Bezos said, or in the letter it said, the acquisition of Whole Foods was the fact that First and foremost, they wanted to get good quality organic food to everyone, or as many people as possible, which I think is is a massive mission. Like, like I totally agree with that. Um, and I think they've got the infrastructure and technology to to do it, especially with Prime and yeah. Amazon Go. Like, it's just going to be just a merger. It it also just made sense for them to buy Whole Foods in the first place. Because they always wanted to go into the fresh food delivery side of things. Cause and grocery. The, the, the everything store, as they're often referred to. Yeah. So, like, obviously fresh food was their next target after they owned other parts of retail. Yeah. So, buying Whole Foods pretty much saved them almost 10 years building out all the distribution channels. Yeah, well, now they've got 100, yeah. however many stores it is across the US. Yeah, so... 
So the, the money, what they spend on it, like 16, 13, 13 billion. billion? Yeah, like 13 billion to save them 10 years of building out those distri- like those distribution centers. Yeah, so now they've got, yeah, like, like a, a Whole Foods positioned in all different places around America and they can just use that as another hub for people to pick up their Amazon parcels or 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 do their grocery shopping or not and just I'm, I'm I'm with the Whole Foods acquisition as a whole I'm surprised no competitor tried to like throw out a counter bid to Amazon's 13 billion dollar thing just to like even if, obviously you're not going to be able to outbid them but yeah, but throw who, out a counter who, bid who would compete off the top of my head Walmart yeah, good point. Yeah, like one, like obviously Walmart's got a lot of money as well, but like bid the price up. Yeah, they can pay a bit more because for thirteen billion dollars they stole Whole Foods. And we were saying, imagine if when they come here, we've got a so in Australia we've got a a, a supermarket chain called Woolworths, and we're just like Amazon to come here, swallow up Woolworths, just buy Woolworths. Yeah, yeah, and then they don't have to build the distribution centers. They've got stores everywhere. Kind of like what they did with Whole, Whole Foods in the US. I see, I see that happening, but I don't at the same time because Australia, twenty-five million people population, we are growing very fast. I'd love to see it happen personally. Yeah, I'd love. All right, little hiccup in episode one. We got the camera pause, but we're going to jump straight back into things. Um, thanks for being patient, podcasters. Um, but yeah, where were we? So we were saying, yeah, on-device fingerprinting technique, which is to do with Amazon Alexa. My Alexa's about to go off. Um, <laughs> so if an ad is playing on TV and it says Alexa, Alexa knows that it's not your voice and won't activate. So when the Super Bowl ad was yeah. playing, which was amazing, um, your, your Alexa won't activate. And then there was a few more things, a new which Kindle. Which skill do you want to enable? Oh, sorry, there Alexa, we, we don't need you. There we go. I thought it was going to come on. Not quite, not quite uh, the anti-activation yet. Um, just, walk, just walk out shopping, just walk out, that's Amazon Go, okay. so that's their new, new terminology for, for Amazon Go is just walk out. Um, and <laughs> they've cracked half a million employees, 560k. But you were that's, saying... Um, yeah, so it's, it's funny that you say that, that Amazon's a hiring machine right now. But on the flip side, with them hiring a lot of people, at the same time they're patenting and also developing a lot of technology that's going to automate a lot of jobs. Yeah, and so they hire one person, but that three one person might not get a yeah, job. Exactly. Yeah. Um, my the biggest example I can think of of what they're doing is um, Kiva robots. So I don't know if you've heard about them, but Kiva robots. Yeah. yeah. So they're the robots that Amazon uses in its fulfillment centers. At the warehouse. Moment, in their warehouses. No one so, working there. Yeah. It's just right, like, and a scary photo would be inside of an Amazon warehouse because there is not. Like, you don't see them. You don't see photos in the warehouse. You don't see any photos or videos of inside an Amazon warehouse because it's all robots and automated. So what happened with Kiva robots was there was a new start up outside of I think in Massachusetts yeah um, Amazon was one of their biggest contractors obviously one of their biggest um, buyers of their yeah. robot technology Amazon ended up buying them taking them over for about 800 million dollars and as soon as Amazon bought them out they cancelled all their other contracts with every other company that they were supplying to just so that they could own the whole they got all the robots <laughs> Yeah. No one else is doing robot warehouses, just us. <laughs> yeah. That's the great white shark of Amazon. But I think that's enough for, for the AWS shareholder letter. Um, Facebook had its F8 event for 2018. Yeah. Uh, did you watch the highlights at all? I watched a few. Um, yeah. You want to kick it off with what you thought was good? Yeah, so let's go for the tech side of things. I think there was one, I don't know whether to be like this or to be scared or to... I'll get your insight and in what it might look from a business business point of view. But Facebook, they essentially they they're going all in on on camera, right? They they love cameras. Zuckerberg loves camera, and I'm a bit wary of time here because we want to keep these episodes within thirty to forty five minutes or maybe a bit less. Um, so, long story short, they want to they want to grab your old photos, 
and so so old photos on your on your devices or just photos of say you took a photo of this point of the room and then we took another photo of that point of the room and if you make an album with that Facebook want to use computer vision to reconstruct the room so you can take a 3D tour of your of the room and see the photos all in one one kind of image which I think is is pretty awesome with as for as far as computer vision technology goes but in terms of what that means in in how they understand like literally the items in your home um, and from an advertising point of view or is this going to be like they, 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 they know what brand of blender you use now and all of a sudden you're seeing that brand of blender pop up in your newsfeed? Well yeah from a business point of view just hearing that Mark says that they're obsessed with the camera yeah, and, and being a camera company almost is just another dog shot at Snapchat because what does Snapchat claim it is? A yeah. camera company essentially. So it's just like another reason why, like, well another stranglehold placed on Snapchat is that Facebook just continues to go after it and after it and after it yeah. and kicking Snapchat while it's down almost. Yeah, but I mean as well, but, but yeah, as, as you said, like if if they have a model of your room, yeah, they know the, your kitchen. The inside, they have all that all that details. They know what sort of brands you're using in your kitchen. So that that's so much that that data of knowing what's in your kitchen is so valuable because they could go. They now what have food you eat. They have yeah. They now have more quantifiable data where they can go to like a big retailer. Like say for example, a, a, a fridge a fridge producer. They can now go to you and say, we know this many people don't have your fridge. We can target ads at these people on our platform. Yeah. So that becomes a lot more valuable to the, the supplier of fridges, for example. Like, this is just a bad, this is a bad example, but you know what I mean? No, like, it's they, not a bad now, example at all. I think it's exactly, exactly the kind of example. Like, and look, we may be overthinking it here because it, 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 if you yeah. just watch the video, I only saw about a minute or, or two minutes of, of what it actually does, but... Um, that being said, with what's happened recently with the, the Analytica thing, coming back, I think a good point on, on the event I saw was the ability to, to clear your history on Facebook. I think that's massive almost. Mm. Um, that's you, been there for ages though. What do you mean? Like you can clear like your entire browsing yep. history of apps, products and uh, yep. external websites. Yeah. That's been there for a while. Well, there you go. See, that's I'm not even on Facebook but, um, at the moment. But um, I guess, obviously, on the flip side, people just didn't know about it. Well, that seemed like it was a new feature that was being announced. But because, anyway. <laughs> because after the Congress hearing... There you go. Speaking of that, but like, I'll just quickly... After the Congress hearing, when, you logged on, when I first logged on Facebook, I got a notification at the top to say that you can now do that. Like, oh, well, that's good. Do, yeah, well, that's it's recent. That. It's fairly yeah. recent, yeah. Um... But then they just, well, we've got enough data, we don't need any more, let's, how much data do we need? Um, and then there was a few, couple more things, which was, uh, they're hiring 20,000 people mm. to work on manually auditing uh, ads, newsfeed items, content, etc, etc. 20,000. Yeah. Uh, my opinion on that, it's just to avoid regulation, to be what honest with you. What do you mean? Well, uh, the, the con like you could depends on how you take it. The Congress hearing obviously didn't go well for them. But yeah. Like, like you look on the flip side, after the Congress hearing, their share price didn't take a hit. Their yeah. share price is still on the decline. So, yeah. so they're going to hire twenty thousand like, people. But, to be but like, just how how good does it look in their perspective to come out and and address those points and just go? We're now going to make twenty thousand new jobs. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Like, hey, government, we're hiring twenty thousand people. To, to curate this stuff so you don't touch anything from us yeah. and we'll just keep it all all within the Facebook world. It's not going to make a dent on their profits either. Yeah. It's like the 20,000 people, what's that, 50k a year, let's just say. That's a billion dollars. Yeah, but... I suppose that that's nothing compared to like what's being a billion, What's spending a billion dollars to protect their yeah. monopoly? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Nothing. That's, yeah, to protect their, their complete pipeline control of of what information people see, which is crazy. Um, 
what else? So yeah, the F8, there's otherwise there was Oculus and a few other things. Um, watch the watch the video if you want. Uh, otherwise, it was like group video chat for Instagram, which was I thought that's going to come eventually. Yeah. Group video chat for for WhatsApp, group video yeah. chat for Messenger, just the same features across. It seems three different chat apps almost now with Instagram with a focus on. But I think that's going to be the next big platform. Like, to, to, yeah, bigger than I was Facebook. about to say. Yeah, Instagram's their big play right now. Yeah, and their big uh, money maker that captures the most attention and has yeah. a lot more people. Uh, I use it. It doesn't have. It has. It does. I don't even think it has half the people on Instagram that it does Facebook. But the yeah, attention yeah. it catches is yeah, it's catches, keyword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Instagram's always in the top, either top, either the first position or the second position for the most downloaded. Um, iOS app. Yeah, it's always, always, always one and two. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, where does AI come into this? Well, of course, with the computer vision they're using in the in the room for the Facebook camera app, um, they they're also using AI to, to to fix the the news feed, like trying to detect fake news versus real news, which I think that's a that's a very hard problem because uh, um, just didn't because I think AI is still blown out of the water in the fact that. It can do some superhuman stuff, which it can. But if a human expert struggles, uh, a machine learning model is also going to struggle yeah, a bit. Because obviously the machine learning models is developed by humans. Yeah. So exactly. So if a if a if, if a human expert on content curation can't tell whether something's fake or not, news, yeah. it's going to be hard. But that being said, Facebook, on the, another AI side, released. Uh, never underestimate the power of these big tech companies, AI firms, and research because they essentially replicated AlphaGo Zero, which is DeepMind's Go playing engine. If you haven't heard, uh, DeepMind built a, an engine which can play Go better than any human player in history and better than its own engine it built a couple of years ago. It beat, its, it beat itself a hundred times and essentially it learned from scratch. Like they didn't, they didn't teach anything, they just, they just said, here's go, a few minor settings maybe, and it, it learned. It played against itself and just got better than anyone will ever be at go. But Facebook, so DeepMind is Google, um, Facebook AI research built their own version called uh, OpenGo, I think. And the reason they called it OpenGo is because they open sourced it. So that the code for it is all online. Now you can look f how they did it. Um, I don't think I'd love to see their their one play AlphaGo Zero. Like it'd be a oh. contest. <laughs> Imagine that. I'd I'd watch that live. Yeah. Like I would I would hundred percent tune into that. Like I think someone I should think try to do of, that. I think a lot of people would. Yeah. So they and the codes online and they also released it along. Uh, maybe the framework's been out called ELF, which is something E. Experimental, maybe I don't know what the E stands for, but experimental light framework, um, which is a, a reinforcement learning framework, uh, which is essentially uh, what they used to play uh, AlphaGo. They use this framework. So if some another developer like my me and my team, who we've been working on the, an open AI competition to build a super playing Sonic the Hedgehog, we can use Facebook's framework, which is all open source. I haven't dived too much into that, but I think that's really cool um, for Facebook to go, hey, we've seen uh, DeepMind do this really cool thing, we're going to replicate it with our own engineers and our own scientists, and then open source it for everyone. Because I think that's how everyone wins. It's if it's yeah. open source, um, okay, sure, you, don't, you might not make as much money, whatever, but is that, is that the goal? You, you, you contribute to the development and the progress of the field yeah, by like, making it open source. Yeah, exactly. So think about if, if you're a young developer, you, you're just getting into the field and you go online and you, you want to learn this stuff, and you jump in and you use Facebook stuff, because all on, uh, where are you going to work later? Yeah. Because it's all open source, where are you going to work? It's you're going to be, oh, I want to work for here because that's who got me a leg up. That's I think that's that's like the the ten year rule, the twenty year rule. It's like you should always, always be nice, always whatever, because you never know when it's going to come back. Exactly. Yeah. But I think otherwise, I think that's enough. We got the, the Amazon shareholder letter, Facebook F eight announcements, uh, Facebook open sources its own version of AlphaGo. Oh, we did have one more thing, um, but I think for now. We'll leave it, but it's it's essentially the sleep podcast from from Joe Rogan with uh, I think it's Matthew Walker. 
I'm not entirely sure. Well, but you listened to I don't it. know. Did you what do you think of the sleep podcast with Joe Rogan? Oh, I think everyone should definitely check it out. Yeah. What what was your takeaway from it? Probably I'd probably say that I I really was drawn by the fact that um, when they changed the school time. Yeah. So originally a school in um, America used to start at seven thirty. Um, their SAT scores or something like that. Test scores. Yeah. yeah, yeah the test, test scores. scores. So average, started at seven thirty. Yeah. Their average test score was like a twelve hundred or something, which were, which apparently is still very good. Hmm. But when they moved the chain the start time to eight thirty, their average test score went up to fifteen hundred. Which is just insane. Yeah, and yeah. I think the the other one I was blown away with was the the doctors um, doing thirty hour shifts or something, which is oh. inhumane. And it all started from this one doctor back in the day who did coke. No, who was addicted to coke because they used it as a pain treatment, and he was testing it on his, on himself. This is this is about a hundred years ago. So essentially, the podcast was Joe Rogan, who's an awesome dude, with uh, Michael Walker or Matthew Walker. Sorry, bro, I forgot your, your actual name. But he's a PhD researcher in sleep, essentially, for 20 years. He's wrote this book, and it's just blown me away. I already value my sleep highly, but this thing... Anyway, this doctor, 100 years ago or something, they used cocaine to treat pain. And he, suddenly he got addicted to cocaine. He would do 30-hour shifts because people were like, this guy's insane, he's, he's working so long. And he's like, well, the student doctors need to keep up with me. And the, the interns, something like 1 in 20, because they're so sleep deprived, 1 in 20 ends up killing someone accidentally. Because 1 in 20. Yeah. Doctors, new doctors, student doctors. And 1 in 5 injures someone, which is ridiculous. Um, or you're 400% or something more likely to uh, what it, make an injury after a certain period of time. Like, it's just the, the, the data that they had, and I'm, I'm probably mis, mis, mis uh, reinterpreting some of the ex exact numbers, but when you listen to them, they're just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So you, I, if I go for another any surgery, I'm going to be asking the doctor, how much sleep have you had? Because there's something like... Well, you know, major, yeah, no, yeah, major, sur yeah. major surgery. Like, if the doctor hadn't had X amount of sleep, and this is no, like, no malice towards doctors, it's just the one case example, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Um, how much sleep have you had? Because it's something like 170% more likely to make an error if they've had six or less hours sleep in the past 24 hours, which is, I think, something so easy to fix, but who knows? Who knows? I'm going to be sleeping with, more, with, let's with, put it that with, way. With that being said, it shows the value that AI and robotics and machine learning will bring to the, the healthcare, healthcare world. But we'll talk about that next podcast, most likely. Yeah, maybe in a, maybe in a future episode. But that was that was fun. We had a little bit of business, a little bit of technology, a uh, little bit of health, and three-ish topics: Amazon, Facebook, and and health. Um, but otherwise, what what do you think the question of the week is? What can we what can we give our viewers to go out and do? It's a good one. <laughs> yeah, question You've of the week. caught me off guard here. Yeah. Question of the week is, uh, go check out one of the things we've talked about today and uh, send us in. Send us in something. Actually, that can be challenge. Challenge yeah. of the week. We're, we're kind of thinking of this on the fly. So challenge of the week, go through one of the resources we've shared with you and share, share your favorite thing with us. Um, if you want to ask us a question or if you want to talk about a topic, um, send me an email, daniel at mrdburk.com, and we'll, we'll get it on one of, the, uh, one of the next shows. If you can send in audio, we'll, we'll try to play it on the yeah. show, and, um, and we'll go off that. So if you've got any questions, any advice, whatnot, send it in. Yeah, feedbacks. Appreciate yeah. it for the first one. Yeah, actually, what worked? This is the first episode, so what worked, what didn't, what do you want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? What do you want to hear more of? What do you want to hear more of? More technology, more health, more business. Uh, who knows? We're still working this out. Um, but otherwise, if you want to find out more, all the links will be in the description or the show notes. But otherwise, do we have a sign off? No. Oh yeah, Will. Next episode, Will's going to do upside down. He promised me. So <laughs> that's that's he's going to do the whole thing upside down. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. Bro, you're gonna sign off? <laughs> <laughs>
I'm out of here. Time to go play some Fortnite. Guys.